but I'm messing everything up here on my notebook. It's fun. Battlefield of Eternity, a place where simplicity used to have bands elicited toward them. The idea was if simplicity is the strong team fighting team and that's the only place where they can, or only way that they can get wins over higher skilled or higher uh, whatever you want to look at teams, then we'll just ban Battlefield of Eternity. It's such a team fighting focused battleground. But no tomorrow says nine. We will take them to Battlefield of Eternity. Genji's been let through. Genji on this map, pretty scary. Hanzo, terrifying to let through because his success rate on this battleground. Heroes like Yorel do have a place here. Heroes like Raynor do have a place here. I think their value becomes lesser than some of those other heroes. Yeah. Tracer as well can be considered. We've even seen teams on this battleground go into Abathur style of compositions. Sergeant Hammer. Sar Sergeant Hammer, yes. We love our Sergeant Hammer. So there is the a lot to consider. Hammers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots. The more the better. Just not the sergeant ones? They were. I know. Ah, okay. there we go. Those Diablo <laughs> sounds. I love it. I remember when this map and Infernal Shrines came out and we had the uh, change of the music and had that big event around it, Eternal Conflict, and the song that came out that was like the Heroes of the Storm theme song, but in Diablo style, so good. I just want to hear Luke Golane music. I know you don't know where it's Act 2 and Diablo 2. It's wonderful. Well, that entire act has great music. Blizzard Gapes, in general, it's fair to say, have some. Ooh, do you have a favorite place in World of Warcraft that you remember, like, I would go here just to listen to the music? I can tell you mine. It's still mean, my favorite. Go ahead. The Howling Fjord in Wrath. Every time I would go in there and the music would kick off, I would just randomly quest there just so I could listen to the music. My favorite place, but not music-based, was Booty Bay. Yeah, it is, it's always a cool place. It was awesome. Also, what was the little Is it because you had to coastal, go through Stranglethorn? Coastal town, yeah, because I love jungle. Gadgets in. Uh, yeah, but there's Gadgets in, but then there's the coastal town by it. That's probably my favorite place, too. Like, that has the castle? No, man. It's like, on, it's got the pier. There's, like, gadget sand, and then you run down a road. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah, then yeah. there's the other town. Don't remember. But I always loved the first time you go to any, uh, the, the area right next door. Oh, my goodness. Names are escaping me. Draft is kind of important. I got to think about that. Yeah. But the first time the giant dinosaur sneaks up on you. Always terrifying. Mm. We're honing it in. A lot of focus is on the race for Battlefield of Eternity. Having a good, solid race hero can help turn your team fights into being able to claim the objective when you go back and get it, or being able to zone people away and get some damage done in the process. And we're kind of seeing an arms race for those uh, heroes right now with Raynor and Hanzo already banned. Do we see something like a gray main, or are we gonna turn things around? Tracer will be banned here by Simplicity. What do you think that last one's going to be? Do you think No Tomorrow have to take your Rel back away from Zuna? Simplicity with this ban. I'm thinking they might be going down a Genji style if it becomes available. Okay. Sergeant Hammer's going to be there. Your Rel definitely speaks volumes about their play style. But I think this is one of the rare battlegrounds where you can go a Genji comfortably for a team that doesn't necessarily play a lot of Genji and hasn't really developed their Genji compositions yet, unless they just want to try and counter every bit that Genji's coming at him with. Could be a Murden, get Sledgehammer, get that extra damage done. Sticking to the URL. It's a wise choice for simplicity. URL fits them very well, fits their play style, fits Zuna. Now no tomorrow though, only have two picks and with so many ranged damage dealers and sieging heroes for the race banned away, I think it's crucial that they get something here that can combat that. Simplicity always has the fallback of a thrall to go triple melee with one range. Phoenix is going to be the pickup in Diablo. Players like Justin love Diablo on Battlefield of Eternity. There are mixed areas where Diablo has wallbang potential versus he's out in the open. 
saw a killer stun by Justin, I believe, on this battleground as he Diablo charged into an immortal stun. Those are the scary moments where you get the true value of Diablo. Well, Murden and Li Ming would be the next two picks for Simplicity. That puts them back with Hammer Squad, Murden, and Urel. And has Li Ming as a poke hero for the immortal race. Thrall or Grey Man for Simplicity. Still no Genji to be seen in this draft, though. That's something No Tomorrow could maybe get. Though Casanova has been playing the Phoenix. Jay Shrita is a, uh, a very capable, very flexible player. Even in his time playing for Latam, he was the flex player who played whatever a team needed from the Lost Vikings to the Hyper Carry. But Genji's going to be a ban instead for No Tomorrow, playing it safe. Imagine if in this next rotation, No Tomorrow picks up Thrall and Greymane for themselves and tell Simplicity good luck. Well, it would synergize very well with what they have already. Jay Shritta loves his gray mane. I really wonder what Simplicity has beyond those two heroes. Thrall seems extremely likely for Simplicity. Incredible poke on this map. Post-16 Thrall terrifying in these open areas. There's the Thrall, not Greymane, but still Thrall. Not sure yet who will be playing that. We'll find out with that final pick. Slowed from Earthquake into Lightning Breath with a Salvo behind that. Whoever this support is has their work cut out for them. Mm -hmm. There is a decent amount of mobility between Urel, Murd, and Anne Leeming so far. It's Simplicity, it's Tiger JK, it very well could be Karazim. Stick with Alex Straza and Greymane for a possible double reset composition given what Greymane chooses as his heroic ability. Are we going triple melee with no tomorrow? Doesn't really seem like their kind of style, but could be. Do we get wild here? Jaina's still up if they want to get just something safe damage. Oh, I was about to do. say Zero Tool to bring it in here, and I couldn't get it out. The timer beat me. Okay, why? Well, Thrall, I think in this situation, Thrall generally pairs with another melee. Yeah. Another melee assassin, I should say. A Zero Tool has excellent flanking position. You don't have a lot of utility to take care of the Zero Tool on the back line to reveal. And oftentimes just getting the dismount or the stun reveal or the invisibility reveal allows you to auto attack and that kind of gets things started. And Greymane Mane trades out pretty well with Zero Tool, but that is a very squishy back line. There's a lot to set up with the VP here. It's high execution with all zero tool compositions, mm -hmm. but this is one where I like it a lot. Battlefield of Eternity is one of the maps where we see zero tool come out. There's not as high emphasis on wave clear and rotations. And that's where zero tool really shines. It's just more towards the late game where his impact is really felt. That's exciting. It's an exciting composition to see that zero tool and Thrall be put together. Uh, who do you think is going to be playing the zero tool? You think it'll be Tomster? Tomster's old school thrall was pretty terrifying. That's true. Let's find out. Ooh. It's Jay. Jay busting out the Zeratul. Now, Jay Shritta is known to change things up in his builds. Any world you think will see anything different than the standard cleave build? If it were, I would say it would be at level one, but yeah. it is going to be the extra radius. Okay. Globes on this map, they're hard to come by, but you only need 15. Getting the auto attacks in to reduce your blink cooldown, especially if you're going wormhole at seven. It's, it's rare. Mm -hmm. I think it's more rich style on stream play than it is in competitive. There are three different people who could man the solo lane for no tomorrow. For the moment, be Jay Shritta. The top lane versus Zuna, now revealed. So 
So Simplicity knows what is up with that. As long as they keep their eyes on him, takes a lot of the threat away. Because the threat comes from his pseudo-global ability with his, uh, his cloaking being off the minimap. The lack of globes showing itself for Diablo. Mm -hmm. Feast and the fear. It's not the actual name, but that's what we're going with. Stunning, getting the stuns with either your shadow charge, the overpower, giving you some additional healing. Everything else, though, uh, you think we're going to see a sledgehammer this game, given it's King Caffeine? The potential is always there. Mm -hmm. Right now, Simplicity, they're taking advantage of the weak wave clear by Zeratul. Do get a tower down. Zuna's going to heal back up. Cool to see Simplicity use this gray main. Um, when we saw a, a gray main rotation on Battlefield of Eternity yesterday, it was to go straight up and get the Cosmic Camp. But the adaptation here, because Jay Shrita was uh, vulnerable by himself in that lane, let them get a tower down. And though No Tomorrow got the Cosmic Camp in the bottom lane, it was cleared out relati relatively quickly from Simplicity so that they didn't take any structural damage. So for Simplicity, being able to get some structure damage done helps you know where the next uh, immortal will be if you're able to um, control it and get the immortal. And so having that so that you can set up the lanes accordingly is also a nice additional win for them. But they're going to back on out and work on getting their shaman camp before this next phase. Be surprised if they pick it up early and they might just sit on that, deal with this top camp. They're going to pick it up early, so won't have that pushing during the objective. Let's know tomorrow just takes their time, but Jen and Shrite in position. See if they can find a kill, but the rest of Simplicity is starting to show up. See if they can stretch that lead. They'll use this camp by a little bit of time. See if they can maybe get a tower down. So they're going to back away as Diablo flips the Shaman in and make sure he gets dealt with. So that will be in favor of No Tomorrow, having their Shaman camp perfectly timed for the start of this phase. Eventually, Simplicity will need to deal with that. They have heroes in line who could do that. But it's about getting it set up faster with this Lee Ming and Grey Main so they can get more damage done. K1 okay. Bros in Worgen form. I, he went back in, Gilly. I don't know if he just... It, there was no threat when he goes in, but the... It's King Caffeine. He's in trouble. He has to stay there on the point. He's either get the heal there or try to run away. There was no imminent threat of the stuns, but to move in willingly, it's questionable decision-making. Good roots, follow up on the stuns there by the rest of No Tomorrow. Simplicity, they're gonna hold point here as Zuna goes in onto Akaface. K1 Pro back in the mix. Well, from what we have seen, Simplicity is just aggressive at all aspects, all times of the game, and K1 Pro has been very aggressive this series, from his Phoenix to now his Greymane, which I, if I look at Greymane and and uh, Li Ming, I would not say hosty on Li Ming and K1 Pro playing the Greymane, but K1 Pro did say that they're working on some adjustments in hero pools to fit their roles better. Zuno's gonna make Casanova warp out. This gives more time for K1 Pro to clear out the rest of this immortal, and despite losing the couple of kills they did, Simplicity with a fast race and response time still gets the immortal. Great man and Li Ming do have very good race. Phoenix, Thrall, some, but not enough. First immortal. See how aggressive Simplicity wants to get with this. With Li Ming, the kill potentials there. With K1 Pro on Grey Main, the siege potentials there. But you cannot even approach that gate until it is down, else Jin will grab you and bring you and welcome you into his world. He's going to get you. Zeratul still in the top. Urel there too, so it's known by Simplicity. They feel pretty good to press this slightly further. They're putting more damage on the fort, not looking at the well too much. It's more about trying to get that fort down if they can or deal a lot of damage. There will be a camp underneath this. Zeratul went oh. down, but the trade, the 1v1 of legends that we uh, 
we'll have to maybe find out what happened there later on. All I know is in chat, there better be four letters. L-A-G-F. Sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. Yep, he's been using it. You might have mentioned that, but sometimes you just get so into the game, everything talent-wise. So many changes in this map. Mm -hmm. Another usage, or lack thereof, of dominance in favor of the Charge Blast, which can give you more of that immortal race. And often would see that as a pickup still on Battlefield of Eternity, even if Dominance was still the choice otherwise. But here, having that uh, Charge Blast is going to give more to that, but does mean that he won't be getting healing back after getting some resets, and that's something to keep in mind when you have things like the Arsenal Synergy of Casanova trying to chase him down, or the J. Shrita Zeratol, which will be a factor. Casanova trying to trade out here. Jen comes in with a charge. King Caffeine and team, they're answering back. Shrite, aggressive there with that wormhole. Zuna should be able to win this with a big hammer. There we go. So No Tomorrow has changed things up, putting Tomster in the top lane now that he has some more of his self-sustain with Ancestral Wrath, which allows Jay Shrita to be aggressive, and he's doing that, working on taking down Hosty, who was left in the bottom lane for the time being. Simplicity working on getting Greymane onto the Immortal and do have a lead in the race. Phoenix still finishing up the camp. That will force out a rotation from Simplicity eventually. I think what Simplicity are hoping is that they can force halfway point and then go get 10 because they are falling behind in experience. But a lot of these skill shots have been eaten up by the bodies of No Tomorrow. And Malfurion has that sustain. K1 Pro coming down. Shrite blinks away. Even the tree ant getting some block value there on that orb. 10 picked up here by no tomorrow. This is when they get real scary. Mm -hmm. That combo you talked about with the Void Prison. They have Salvo and Earthquake to follow after that. The Lightning Breath, too or even just to separate the team apart so you don't have things like a Dragon Queen, the Life Binder, to try to save whoever is the target from No Tomorrow. Halfway point has been forced. Zuna gets slammed into the wall as the healing there, though, and gets a big old dose of healing. Lightning Breath out, the Void Prison in the back. Earthquake, too. Zuna getting melted. Has Ardent Defender starts to heal up thanks to the shots of the Purification Salvo, but Greymane still falls. King Caffeine trying to make it out alive. Able to hit the hammer, heal comes down, Cap able to survive. Only 4,500 health on this immortal. Simplicity can take it down. Defensive state here by Jen and Tomster, trying to block all of the damage or as much as possible. Sledgehammer continuing to show how strong that is. Phoenix and team, not a lot of race as we see Greymane making his way back. Jin has tanked fight. like 90% of gleaming shots, but a stun it hits in the further stun follow-up of the Immortal chunks through oh, that King hammer. Caffeine's health bar. That was a beautiful hammer though. Jin goes down. King Caffeine waiting for that second win to kick in. The Immortal has fallen. Zuna holding point. He's gonna fall. One for one trade. Diablo did lose his souls. That puts him back on the battleground a little bit quicker. Now, this is a chance for Simplicity with Immortal number two, heavily shielded, but still a ways away before Ural makes her way back. Would generally be in the solo lane to begin with. Yeah, they'll just leave the solo lane. But Zeratul is going to, he has uh, Void Prison back up in 10 seconds. Lightning Breath will already be used, setting up for this Purification Salvo, and there were some slows there. Jay Shritta on top of Hosty, but we see a cleansing flame from Alex Straza, and that keeps Hosty healthy. Oh, Shrite was so close to dying. Oh, yikes. Hosty, lightning. lightning hits. He stays alive. King Caffeine Dwarf tosses out. Had Hosty been able to get that reset, Shrite made it out with minimal health.
Didn't have to burn. Ardent Defender was watching that one closely with the Vorpal back in and then the follow up Jin rotating down. Zuna stays alive. What has been very admirable for me is for No Tomorrow, despite losing both of their forts, both of these immortals, the team fighting that they have done and that they're continuing to do, Jay Howe, has kept in this game. Hosty Wave of Force gets some time there. Shrite low on health. Dragon is out. There's the stun. Can we get the follow up? Jen getting low. Greymane going in. Unable to confirm the kill. Lightning Breath in return, as well as the salvo. Enough to take down one. Shrite confirms another. Two members of Simplicity fall. Unfortunately, no cleansing flame, though Tiger JK and the setup of the uh, team fight for Simplicity was trying to make the most out of the splash damage and the heals doing all they could from Alex Straza, but the second that Purification Salvo decided to let go, Jay Shrita had the cooldowns up to go in and get the execution, and that was some stellar team fighting from No Tomorrow in the back and forth turn there. It was initiated by Simplicity. Good turnaround for No Tomorrow. No 13 in that fight for Simplicity. I don't think for either team. But once Muradin gets healing static, he was forced to walk away from that fight and kind of escalated things a little bit quicker. And I mm -hmm. think once that comes available, fights look a lot different for Muradin compositions. Yeah, for sure. Especially since he didn't take third wind. He's very focused on damage with his current build. So healing Sonic is going to help a lot. But enough. That's what we'll find out. Double camp in the bottom. Camp in the top against Simplicity's camp. There's a lot of pressure against Simplicity from No Tomorrow. Root went out. Tom's using Wind Fury. He's running around the side. King Caffeine's going to get split apart. There's a Void Prison. Cleansing Flame used early on in this fight. Don't know if he has Dragon Queen back up yet either. Hosty! Hosty oh, Salvo. Will not survive. Simplicity is getting wrecked in these fights. There's going to be takedown number two. Shrite going in. It's only going to get scarier for Simplicity. No Tomorrow continues to scale with Zeratul and Phoenix. Yeah, and the thing is, Simplicity, how this game has gone so far, Simplicity wins the Immortal, and then No Tomorrow forces a team fight around the Immortal, gets the fight, clears up the Immortal, loses a fort, but stays in the game in experience. This time, it's a far different story because they win the fight prior to the Immortal phase. Now Simplicity have had all these camps pushing against them because they fought and No Tomorrow used the last fight to get those camps on the board. Everything is pushed against. A fort went down. No Tomorrow has more than a level lead and this time have a lead in the Immortal Health Bar, which is going to force Simplicity to bring the fight to No Tomorrow. In doing so, though, they take out the Diablo, but Topster hits a money route. I think that was a four-man Feral Spirit. Diablo died, but had souls to get back onto the battleground. K1 Pro, he's off doing some damage on the right side of the screen. See if they pull him back oh. as Diablo has come back in. Tiger JK. He has to go cleansing if he's going to. He's wanting to heal himself back I think back it up. might have been interrupted. Oh, yeah, it was. It was. Clutch moment there. Simplicity, they're likely to lose more, so they're going to trade out as best they can as K1 Pro. But Shrite finds himself a Li Ming, K1 Pro. Will he meet the same fate as Zuna comes over for support? Felt somewhat panicked from Simplicity to try to bring that immortal health bar down as far as they could so they'd deal with less shielding. The initial kill for Diablo was good, but when it's Diablo with souls, he can come back in in the setup, the flank Void Prison not even necessary in that fight. The flank was just so good from Casanova and Jay Shritta to pounce. And that forward positioning when you have heroes that are squishy like Li Ming at Greymane, but especially that Alex Straza is gonna be really hard. And so diving past the Muradin and the Urel, excellently done by No Tomorrow. They get an Immortal and they are taken down at the last Fort of Simplicities. One of the things you and I had discussed was the level 16 of Thrall. Mm -hmm in that lightning to do damage in team fights. Very easy to get value of on this map. Instead, we're seeing Tempest Fury, which gives a little bit more in the race. So your third strike, your third auto on that does triple, but for less damage, Jin eats a cursed bullet. VP in response. 
Earthquake and Salvo are ready, so is the Lightning Breath, and they all come out as Simplicity gets torn apart. Greymane goes down, many of the health bars obliterated of Simplicity, and with a Jin combo, they're looking to get that second kill. Immortal still alive, only slightly in the health department, but it's enough for No Tomorrow to get on the core of Simplicity and send us to a game five. The Thrall pick up in denial. Enough here for No Tomorrow to take us to game number five. Is this a reverse sweep? Is it happening? Simplicity's lost a little bit of their mojo. My I, I just... It's the tale of two teams. No Tomorrow in their previous series looked really strong, came out. Game number two looked good, but for Simplicity in their first few games, looked refined. But drafting the last few games seems to be enough for No Tomorrow. Yeah, the, uh, even in previous games that they lost, I still love that Towers of Doom draft, and it's amazing to me that they can put the faith in someone like Jin, who, if you don't know your No Tomorrow history, came in as a replacement when a player quit this team and now has that put on his shoulders and at this level for a weekend where the Octalysis match, every match in HGC is important, but a match when you know you're going up against one of your biggest contenders for who might put you in the crucible again and no tomorrow does not want to be in the crucible they have been there enough and that last one was way too scary that they put that faith in Jin and that he has been bringing them these kinds of compositions that are this close now to being able to get a reverse sweep over simplicity is lovely to see for this team simplicity first two games bans diablo wins simplicity second two games doesn't ban diablo loses coincidence probably not I don't think so either. We'll see if they make that adjustment back to the Diablo band, because Jen, he's putting the hurt on. We'll be back soon with Game 5.